Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Recruit Intake 1 slash 2 1 Pass Out Parade at the historic St. Anne's Fort. I am Lieutenant Coast Guard Sean Hazelwood, today's parade commentator. Please be informed that COVID 19 protocols are in effect for this evening's proceedings. The recruits are being marched on to the tune Sons of the Brave under the command of the Conducting Warrant Officer, Master Chief Petty Officer Class 2, Sean Best. Two platoons make up this afternoon's parade. Platoon 1's commander is Petty Officer Romario Brooms, and Platoon 2's is Sergeant Keelon Mears. I invite you to show them your support by giving a round of applause on their achievement and subsequent start of a new and illustrious career. Accompanying the recruits on parade is the band of the Barbados Defense Force under Drum Major Sergeant Shane Mears. Having dressed the parade, the conducting warrant officer will now hand over the parade to the parade commander, Lieutenant Romar Haynes, officer in charge of the Training Development Institute.
zero, go two, two, seven, seven. Master Chief, Petty Officer, Class Two, Sean Best, Conducting Warrant Officer. Parade comprised, one warrant officer. Two senior non-commissioned officers. Twelve junior non-commissioned officers. And 41 recruits in open order at the shoulder and awaiting the pleasure of your instructions. Sir, please. The parade has been stood at ease as we await the arrivals of the dignitaries. We will now have the arrivals of the military dignitaries. First to arrive will be Commanding Officer of the Barbados Regiment, Major Pedro Drakes, Commanding Officer Acting of the Barbados Coast Guard, Lieutenant Commander Derek Brathwit, and the Commandant of the Barbados Cadet Corps, Major Peter Powlett.
The second cadre of military dignitaries to arrive will be the military advisor to the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell, and the staff advisor to the Chief of Staff, Commander Mark Peterson. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the Chief of Staff of the Barbados Defense Force, Commodore Arrington Sherlin. Please remain standing as he is afforded a general salute. Ladies and gentlemen, you may retake your seats.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the reviewing officer, the Attorney General of Barbados and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Dale Marshall, QC, MP. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The parade officer, Lieutenant Haynes, will now report the parade to the reviewing officer and invite him to inspect recruit intake 1 slash 2 1. Although his primary role is legal advisor to the Prime Minister, the Attorney General is also a member of the Defense Board. Hence, it is fitting that he should be the reviewing officer for this pass out parade. As the reviewing officer inspects the recruits, the band of the Barbados Defense Force renders Yellow Bird and the Coconut Tree Medley, both arranged by D.R. Clark. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the reviewing officer returns to the saluting days. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Having been inspected by the reviewing officer, 
The recruits will now pay compliments to, re to the reviewing officer with a march past in slow and quick time. Drill is an integral facet of all militaries. It produces a soldier who is proud, alert, and obedient, while also forming the basis of discipline and teamwork. Lieutenant Haynes, this evening's parade commander, first enlisted in the Barbados Defense Force in 2015 as a member of the Barbados Regiment Reserves, before transitioning to the full-time element of the force in 2016. Lieutenant Haynes has attended many courses, both locally and abroad, to include platoon commander's course in Guyana, Infantry Command Course in the People's Republic of China and Range Officer Course with the British Army Training and Support Unit in Belize. The conducting warrant officer for the recruit training course 1 slash 2 1 is Master Chief Petty Officer Class 2, Sean Best. He has been a member of the Barbados Defense Force for the past 22 years, during which time he has held various appointments, which include small boat coxswain, training chief, 
Unit Quartermaster Sergeant, Divisional Chief Administrative Division, and Divisional Chief Operations Division of the Barbados Coast Guard. It must also be mentioned that Master Chief Petty Officer Class 2, Sean Bess, is a Level 4 CVQ Assessor for the Technical and Vocational Education Training Council of Barbados. Platoon 1 Commander Petty Officer Romario Brooms is a proud alumnus of the Alexandria School where he was the head prefect. He spent his youth as a cub and a senior scout where he developed a love for the outdoors. This love guided him towards enlisting in the BDF in 2008 where he graduated as best shot. During his 13 years of unwavering and selfless service, he has represented his country and the organization with distinction. He has studied internationally in the UK, where he did chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear damage control. Platoon 2 Commander Sergeant Keelon Mears enlisted in the Barbados Regiment Reserve in March 2001. He is a proud alumnus of the Parkinson Memorial Secondary School and has held various appointments during his 21 years of service. These include a Section Commander and Platoon Sergeant for Alpha Company. He has attended courses such as Mass Casualty Management, Train the Trainers, All Arms Drill Instructor, and he also holds a level four CVQ in training and development. He has a passion for hiking and goes by the mantra, love what you do and never work hard a day in your life.
the March past now complete, the Force Chaplain, Captain the Reverend Hugh Sandiford, will render today's invocation. Good evening to everyone, would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for affording us this opportunity to gather on the occasion of the Pass Out Parade of Recruit Intake 121. We thank you especially, dear Father, for bringing us to this day amidst the many and varied challenges. We pray, dear Lord, that as we gather now to share with these recruits on this auspicious occasion, that they may not see today as a conclusion but rather as the commencement of a new phase which will challenge and test them, where they may put to use all they would have learned during their period of study. And now as we gather here, O oh God, may your Holy Spirit bless this evening's proceedings. And may we all be strengthened to be of service one to the other and to our nation. All this we ask through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated. We will now have the welcome remarks by the staff advisor to the chief of staff, Commander Mark Peterson. Honorable Dale Marshall, QC MP, Attorney General of Barbados, Minister of Legal Affairs, and Member of the Defense Board, Chief of Staff of the Barbados Defense Force, Commodore Ayrton Sherlin, the Military Advisor to the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell, Commanding Officers, Commandant of the Barbados Cadet Corps, and Officers of the Barbados Defense Force, Four Sergeant Major, Master Chief, Class One, Austin Howell, Warrant Officers, Senior NCOs, enlisted ranks and civilian staff of the Barbados Defense Force, the extended Barbados Defense Force family, distinguished ladies and gentlemen present and joining via online platforms, graduates of Recruit Intake 1 slash 2021, and members of the media, good afternoon. I am Commander Mark Peterson, the staff advisor to the Chief of Staff, and it gives me great pleasure to extend to you all greetings and a warmest welcome on behalf of the Chief of Staff and members of the Barbados Defense Force. We consider this a privilege to have you here at the headquarters of the Barbados Defense Force, a site that has the honor of being part of the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization World Heritage Site of Bridgetown and its garrison. I also extend a special welcome to the Honorable Dale Marshall, QC, MP, Attorney General of Barbados and member of the Defense Board. Sir, we are indeed honored that you consented to be the reviewing officer and to deliver the feature address. I thank you in advance on behalf of the entire force, all those assembled here and those joining us virtually. This evening, we are gathered to commemorate a very special occasion, one which will be indelibly etched in the minds of the newest additions to the military profession and the Barbara Defense Force family. On Sunday, the 17th of October, 2021, we welcome 57 proverbial raw pieces of clay and sought to transform the rude matter into due form, mold them into the finest products of pottery, having been pressed into shape with the skilled hands of the training team and hardened through the intensity of training in various military skills. The recruitment process for any military is critical to the replenishment and sustainment of its human resource of trained personnel 
to maintain mission readiness. We have completed technically another military generation, founded upon 43 years of legacy of the Barbados Defense Force and the reputation and on the reputation of the stalwarts who laid the foundation on which we stand. The 16-week period of recruitment is one which consolidates all that was taught by our predecessors and ensures that the standards and traditions are passed on. It is expected that these new entrants into the ranks of the Barbados Defense Force will serve Barbados with honor and distinction long after their graduation here this evening. To the recruits of Recruit Intake 1 of 2021, my welcome to you is no less warm. I bring you greetings on behalf of the rank and file of the Barbados Defense Force, and I welcome you to the military family. These will be your first official words of advice from anyone outside the members of your training team. And my remarks will become repetitive refrains you hear throughout your career about standards and adherence to the force's core values. The only way to maintain the qualities of the profession of arms is to teach the new members while reemphasizing to the existing members the purpose in which we serve. Your loyalty and dedication to the people you serve will undoubtedly assist with the achievement of Barbados' national objectives. Needless to say, that our service must not be for sale to the highest bidder. I call on you to inculcate within yourselves and within your peers, and yes, even your superiors, the core values on which any military force is built. These are honesty, integrity, commitment to duty, selfless service, loyalty, self-discipline, and mutual respect. I encourage you to learn and live by these values. According to Thomas McCalley, British historian and politician, I quote, the measure of a man's royal character is what he would do if he knew he would never be found out, end quote. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the intention of this force to continue to encourage solid citizens into our ranks, dependable, reliable, and who display confidence and courage in all situations. Individuals that will serve this country with all their heart. This can only be achieved through the encouragement and continued support of the family unit. Thus, I wish to personally thank the family members and friends who supported these young men and women. Given the operational tempo of the force, your unswerving support will mean a lot to them. For when duty calls, they will have nothing to worry about on the home front. You are the ones that will help them to succeed in their new chosen profession. They are the ones that will make personal sacrifices because when they are not at home, nine times out of 10, they're out in some way helping the citizens of this country or the region. Ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed pleased to see so many of you here this afternoon. And on behalf of the Chief of Staff and all members of the force, we bid you a very warm welcome to St. Anne's Fort and to this parade to commemorate the entry of these fine 41 young men and women of Barbados into the ranks of the illustrious Barbados Defense Force. I thank you. I now invite the Curriculum Development Officer for the Training Development Institute, Captain Dr. Adriano Marshall, to give the first part of the course report.
The Honorable Dale Marshall QC, MP, Attorney General of Barbados, Minister of Legal Affairs and Member of the Defense Board, Chief of Staff, Barbados Defense Force, Commodore Ayrton Sherlin, Military Advisor to the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell, Staff Advisor to the Chief of Staff, Commander Mark Peterson, Commanding Officer, Barbados Regiment, Major Pedro Drakes, Commanding Officer, Acting Barbados Coast Guard, Lieutenant Commander Derek Brathwaite, Commandant Acting Barbados Cadet Corps, Major Peter Pollitt, Fellow Officers. Captain the Reverend Hugh Stanford, 4th Chino Senior Chaplain, 4th Sergeant Major, Master Chief Petty Officer Warren, Austin Howell, other Warren Officers, Senior Non-Commissioned Officers, other enlisted ranks, civilian members of the Barbados Defense Force, specially invited guests, members of the recruit course, one of 21, the media, Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good afternoon. I am Captain Dr. Drina Marshall, and in my capacity of Curriculum Development Officer of the Barbados Defense Force Training and Development Institute, I have the distinct honor and privilege to deliver the final course report for Recruit Training Course 1 of 21, the first cohort under the BDF TDI banner. The Recruit Training Course 1 of 21 commenced on the 15th of October 2021 with 57 recruits. Timetable to be conducted over a semester period of 16 weeks and armed with a training syllabus designed to produce a physically fit, disciplined, and motivated soldier, the course concluded with 42 soldiers that paraded before you. Throughout the instruction, each participant exhibit interest, enthusiasm, active participation, effort, as well as their willingness to learn. By placing the responsibility for their learning on the recruits, they also became more actively engaged in their personal and professional development. This style of excellent in recruit training relied on instructors who embody the qualities of transformational leaders. I believe that their tenacity, determination, sense of responsibility, leadership, and goal-oriented nature are why we at the BDFTDI were able to manufacture the refined products that you will soon witness amalgamating into the ranks of the Barbados Defense Force. The recruits performed progressively well in the practical areas of their courses. The overall performance rate for field craft and tactics were in the 75 percentiles. Skill at arms overall results showed an average of 90%. The recruits' reaction to this aspect of training were extraordinary. And while they were highly motivated, attention and detail to safety of self and others was not neglected. The battle to be awarded the Marksmanship Trophy was indeed a competitive one. It is particularly important to note that many students applied their previously acquired knowledge to the foot drill aspect of the course. The final course revealed a class average of 85% with room for continuous improvement. Map reading results plotted a class average of 85%. Again, most recruits use their unopinion knowledge to navigate this subject area successfully. Simulation learning was a strategy applied not only to teach course concept, but also to provide students with opportunities to apply new skills, knowledge, and ideas in a practice setting that mirrors a real military world. This being the foundation of our teaching, the course ended with an overall average of 80%. But do not be persuaded by these statistics. Stand by for the display and presentation, which will provide sufficient evidence of the achievements of the learning outcomes of the recruiting training course, one of 21. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the displays. The recruits are being doubled back under the square under the command of Petty Officer Romario Brooms, who is also the Senior Physical Training Instructor on Recruit Intake 1 slash 2 1. He has completed physical training instruction with the University of the West Indies campus at St. Augustine in Trinidad, and he was currently reading for a bachelor's degree in physical education at Barbados Community College. aspect of the PD display will demonstrate how the recruits were taken through many different routines to improve their coordination and cardiovascular ability. Finally, the recruits showcase their improved precision 
balance and flexibility through a gymnastic routine. The pyramid signifies their newfound trust in each other and stresses the importance of teamwork. As the parade collapses, it shows their confidence and trust in their command and comrades, understanding that they are in safe and capable hands. Ladies and gentlemen, show your support and your appreciation by giving a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for the physical training display. An aspect of the internal security training will now be displayed. Please be advised that there will be explosions. Here you see the recruits conducting a mobile patrol in a territory heavily populated by gang violence. After coming under a contact from the front, the recruits sprang into action by tactically dismounting the vehicle and formed two fire teams. They are now advancing into contact with the enemy, where one team moves tactically forward while the other team covers. One of the team members has been hit. And another member has been sent to cover his position. The enemy has been neutralized and the teams are now fighting through the objective 
to ensure that there is no enemy in death. are conducting a tactical withdrawal back to the vehicle and will exit the area as fast as possible. The injured team member will now be withdrawn back to the vehicle. This carry maneuver is one of the many ways the recruits were taught how to evacuate a casualty. The tactical withdrawal continues until all personnel are safely in the transport. During the course of the withdrawal, the radio message was sent to headquarters and another team has arrived to reinforce and form an outer and inner cordon. The outer and inner cordons are being formed to secure the scene from any interference and to allow the members of the Barbados Police Service to conduct their investigations. While calling the area, a member of the same gang confronted and attacked a member of the team at a close distance and was met with brute force. The recruit skillfully blocked the attack and subdued the enemy. As you can see, the police are now conducting their investigations while the recruits continue to stay alert to respond to any further threats. The patrol team has arrived to take the individual away from the scene. The investigation has also concluded and the recruits will now tactically withdraw from the scene. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the internal security display. We will now have the second part of the course report, again delivered by the Curriculum Development Officer for the Training Development Institute, Captain Dr. Drina Marshall. Truly one of the best awards here today to commend these recruits for their journey. 
let me share their journey with you. We at the BDF Training and Development Institute have presented to you a group of individuals who now have an academic foundation complemented with physical fitness, supported by the technical and military skills necessary to perform their duties with efficiency and professionalism in a complex and diverse military environment. The process of transforming civilians into military personnel has been described by military historian Gwen Dyer as a form of conditioning that encourages inductees to partially submerge their individuality for the good of their unit. Truly the initiation period for the recruits was an eye-opening experience as most of them had the opportunity to feel what is actually called a boot camp. The process of transforming, sorry, the process of transforming these recruits into soldiers allow us to indoctrinate the recruits into the BDF culture, values, and ethics. Each recruit develop a personal culture of determination, grit, and perseverance to carry with them throughout their military career. Transitioning into the main body of training, the instructional focus was on marksmanship, map reading, first aid, skill at arms, military law, signals, foot and arms drill. Aspects of the health and safety education Physical training instructors completely apply testing protocols and exercises, expanding different tactics to train the recruits for combat readiness, as you will have just witnessed. The results of this intensive training had a positive impact on enhancing the musc muscle endurance, cardiovascular, and flexibility, as ably demonstrated here today. To the family and supporters of these adventurous men and women, I give you a special acknowledgement for the tremendous support you have given these recruits throughout this course. As these soldiers progress through their careers, they will require you to remain steadfast in the support you give to them, and you must continue to encourage them along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, continue to enjoy your evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the recruits will now be marched back on for the awards presentation phase of the parade.
During the period of recruiting at Paragon, the recruits would have undergone several assessments to track their progress and to determine their suitability to join the ranks of the Barbados Defense Force. Given this, I invite the Chief of Staff of the Barbados Defense Force, Commodore Arrington of Sherland, to present the following four awards. Best at Academics, Recruit, Doughty, K. best at academics is awarded to the recruit who received the highest average in theoretical assessments. These assessments covered areas such as map reading theory, field craft theory, military law, and military general knowledge. The next award goes to best at drill. Recruit, Waterman K. Best at drill is awarded to the recruit who has received superior scores in their drill assessment, displays a consistently high standard of deportment, and has performed well in several drill competitions conducted by the drill instructors known as the drill off. The next award is for best at marksmanship. Recruit Jones Coombs S. Best at marksmanship is awarded to the recruit who achieved the highest average score in both the pistol and rifle marksmanship tests and was consistent in their application of fire in all other range practices. Best among pairs, recruit Sergeant R. This awardee was voted for by the recruits. This recruit demonstrated excellent teamwork, 
motivated his peers and embodied the spirit of camaraderie. Well, thank you, sir. I now invite the reviewing officer, the Honorable Dale Marshall, QC, MP, Attorney General of Barbados, and Minister of Legal Affairs to present the next three awards. Best at Physical Training, Recruit Yearwood J. Yes, Best at Physical Fitness is awarded to the recruit who demonstrated a superior level of fitness throughout the course and was deemed best at fitness. This was determined by assessing both the recruit's strength and cardiovascular ability. Best recruit or runner-up, recruit Waterman Okay. Yes, This recruit's performance would have been deemed to be the second best across all subject areas, and this was determined by their average results and their showcase of consistently good work. This recruit's overall performance was seen as a true embodiment of the BDF's motto, a symbol of excellence. And now the award that we've all been waiting for the recruit who performed exceptionally well across all subject areas, determined by their average results and their showcase of consistent hard work. This is the recruit who also showcased all the core values of the Barbados Defense Force. Courage, discipline, respect, integrity, loyalty, selfless service, and commitment to duty. He is a proud alumnus of the College and Paris School and has a keen interest in communication and technology. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best recruit for recruit intake one slash two one, recruit Edwards J. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for the best recruit. Well, 
we will now have the feature address by the reviewing officer, the Honorable Dale Marshall, QC, MP, Attorney General of Barbados, and Minister of Legal Affairs. Chief of Staff of the Barbados Defense Force, Commodore Errington Sherlin, officers and enlisted ranks of the Barbados Defense Force, friends, very enthusiastic friends and family, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, and recruit, recruits of the intake number one of 2021, let me bid you all a good afternoon. Today's Passing Out Parade is a moment of pride for all of us, but more especially for the 42 men and women who have successfully completed the rigorous training program to qualify you to wear the uniform of the Barbados Defense Force. And if you ever had any doubt about whether it was rigorous or not, I'm sure you recollect the fine display of physical fitness. Allow me at the outset to offer congratulations on behalf of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, and also, who is also the Chairman of the Barbados Defense Board. Unfortunately, she could not be here this evening to join you in this afternoon's celebratory event. I note, having been advised by the Chief of Staff, that this intake number one of 2021 is the first intake of recruits into the Barbados Defense Force since 2018. That is too long a time to pass without bringing new blood, new members, new young men and women into this organization. But I'm heartened because the Commodore has indicated to me that he expects to have a number one of 2022 starting in July. And so the Prime Minister has requested that I relay her best wishes and the best wishes of the entire Defense Board on this important occasion. And we trust that the years ahead will be richly rewarding for all of you who now serve and for those who are about to join your ranks in the BDF. I am honored to have been afforded a very pleasant opportunity to address you at this evening's Passing Out Parade within the precincts of the historical military fort of St. Anne's. All of you standing before me have responded magnificently to the call to serve your country in the profession of arms. And you've done so in many instances at great sacrifice to your own personal development and to your families. This forces readiness to respond to various requests for assistance, whether at home or within the region, is worthy of note. Notwithstanding the manpower and resource challenges, the Defense Force has demonstrated its capacity to accomplish tasks which at many times may seem near impossible. This, in essence, is the hallmark of readiness as a professional military organization. The Defense Force, as one of the primary elements of this island's security architecture, must of necessity always be ready to respond on a 24-hour basis daily and at very short notice. Indeed, the nature and scope of the multidimensional and transnational threats to our national security and to the safety of our people demand that the land and maritime forces of our small island be fully prepared to confront and, if necessary, eliminate threats with swift dispatch. And let me, at this point, thank all of the members of the Defense Force for their continued hard work with the, Royal, with the Barbados Police Service, including the many joint patrols, and also for your work in safeguarding our maritime spaces. The, world, the vulnerable, complex, and uncertain world environment to which Barbados is inextricably linked presents for us a multiplicity of security challenges, many not of our own making. And the COVID-19 pandemic, the most topical today perhaps, is one such challenge which is not featured greatly on our radar prior to December of 2019. But as you well know, this is no longer the case. Barbados has enjoyed and continues to enjoy peaceful and friendly relations with the wider international community. Additionally, the Caribbean is one of the most peaceful regions of the world. 
These attributes, however, do not shield nor protect us from the negative and indirect consequences arising out of the pandemic. The most recent variant, Omicron, which is on our lips, and which is affecting our people, is certainly less deadly and less aggressive than the earlier Delta or Alpha variants. However, we cannot retreat and we cannot surrender. I note with interest your demonstration of some of the elements of your readiness to respond to your security-related missions. In fact, let me digress and say that I was absolutely astounded um, by the skills that you have demonstrated, and I wonder if we couldn't steal some of you for the Barbados Police Service. Nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, <laughs> I wish to compliment the entire force on its state of readiness and encourage every officer and enlisted rank to provide the highest quality service that you can with the, re with the resources available to you. This high quality service is necessary not only in support of the pandemic effort, but also in every other field of military endeavor before, before and long after the pandemic passes. Simply put, Barbados is not immune to the security threats that exist. It is therefore of utmost importance that the Defense Force and all other security agencies in Barbados be ready not only to respond in the aftermath of events, but to be involved in proactive and decisive action to counter and if necessary, eliminate any threats to our peace, stability, and security. The Defense Force today, and what it becomes tomorrow, and every day thereafter, will be dependent on each, of every, each and every one of you. You, the newly enlisted, are now a part of a family, a military family, and you have a vital role to play each and every day of your service in making your positive contribution. You are all here to provide the best quality of military service to the people of Barbados whenever and wherever duty calls. In essence, you are here to serve our national flag and all that it embodies. The military is a place of high standards and the Defense Force will be judged based on how you carry yourselves outside of the walls of the barracks. You'll be judged on your standard of dress. You'll be judged on your conduct on the streets. And if ethics and morals in the Barbados Defense Force are to mean anything, it must mean that you recruits try honestly and earnestly to determine the right course of action and then follow it. It means doing the right thing at all times, even when others try to influence you in doing otherwise. In seeking to keep our ethical and moral compass on the right and good bearings, I encourage all of you to examine the ethical and moral parameters that are prevalent and that are the standard bearers of the Defense Force. Consider, first of all, whether the action you take is right or wrong, honorable, disgraceful, good or bad. And I remind you as Attorney General that from recent events, you should be well aware that your uniforms and your office will not put any of you above the law. I expect that as members of the Defense Force, you will all strive to demonstrate integrity, sound judgment, solid moral principles as you discharge your many duties. I expect also that as members of the Defense Force, you will remain faithful and consistently bear true allegiance to Barbados. In closing, Commodore Sherlin, permit me to offer some advice to your recruits. Respect yourselves and demand respect from your counterparts. Be ever conscious of the security implications of what you do and what you say, and what you say especially. You must never discuss matters of a security nature outside of the confines of your military responsibility. Social media can be your friend, but it can also be your enemy. Let dignity, honor, pride, and industry be reflected in the discharge of your duties as you go about them daily and as you serve through the ranks of the Defense Force. To you, the graduates, becoming a member of the BDF is a conscious decision that you've made to contribute meaningfully to the upliftment and security of Barbados. 
your dedication and your commitment to this country's future is what every citizen expects of you from today and for as long as you wear this uniform. And it is what your instructors, I know, have been preparing you for over the last three months. For this, our government applauds your unselfish career choice, and we welcome you into its service. As you undertake your new role, however, know that every aspect of your performance will be monitored. Nothing but the highest expectations will be placed on you to serve us in an outstanding manner using the high quality training you've just received. Your dress, your deportment, your conscientiousness, all must remain impeccable. Do not allow yourselves to be lured into actions that will erode your integrity, decency, and trustworthiness. Remain proud of yourselves and your uniform and the reputation of the Defense Force. I personally congratulate each of you on reaching this great achievement. I especially congratulate those who have received awards this evening, but I know that all of you will have struggled in the same way. Wear the uniforms of the Defense Force with pride. These uniforms represent a force whose motto is one word, excellence. I wish you a bright, fulfilling, and productive career. It is now up to you which path you set out on when you march off of this square. I offer to the sincere thanks and appreciation on behalf of the government and people of Barbados for the outstanding service that you will provide in the years to come. Congratulations on your endeavors and Godspeed. Thank you. When a recruit is reflecting of their basic training, some of his or her worst memories and fondest will be of the instructors. The initial horror of the early morning physical training, the endless hours of drill on the runway, the time spent racing across the back square. Well, in take one slash to one, it is finally over. Now is the time for those dreaded and yet respected instructors to pay compliments to you and bid you adieu and best wishes as you join the rank and file of the Barbados Defense Force. The instruction team consisted of Lieutenant Romar Haynes, Master Chief Petty Officer Class 2, Sean Bess, Color Sergeant Akeem Horn, Petty Officer Romario Brooms, Sergeant Keelon Mears, Corporal Carlos Barnett, Corporal Kyle Mears, Corporal Nicholas Best, Leading Seaman Lamar Mears, Leading Seaman Kimar Eiffel, Able Seaman Gabriel Williams, Lance Corporal Kyle Mosley, Lance Corporal Wayne Webster, Lance Corporal Darren Daniel, Able Seaman Andre McLean, 
Lance Corporal Chantal Morris and Lance Corporal Elsa Mofford. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand in preparation for the recitation of the National Pledge by the recruits. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Petty Officer Nicholas Shallery will now march off the recruits in preparation for the amalgamation. The amalgamation symbolizes the acknowledgement of these wants and trained personnel as having made the standard to be accepted into the rank and file of the Barbados Defense Force. These young men and women are now part of an illustrious institution and will carry on the proud legacy of a force that whenever called upon has been able to conduct the taskings acts of it. From humanitarian assistance and disaster relief to security operations, from military assistance to the civil power to community development, the Barbados Defense Force stands ready, willing, and able. The trained soldiers are being marched on under the command of Lieutenant Pierre Braffitt from the Special Operations Company. A graduate of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, Lieutenant Braffitt is currently the platoon commander for two platoon at Paragon Base. Of note, he was the 2018 British Armed Force Champion at Judo. He holds a bachelor's degree in accounts and finance and a diploma in mechanical engineering.
The recruits are being marched back on by Master Chief Petty Officer Class 2, McAndrew Otley, a 22-year veteran of the force. He himself had some successful stints in his junior years as an instructor at Training Wing, as it was known back then. It must be noted that the parade personnel in charge of the troops for the opening phase of the parade were members of the Training Development Institute, while those for this phase of the parade are drawn from different elements of the full-time force. This further symbolizes the recruits fully becoming a part of the Barbados Defense Force. Ladies and gentlemen, a symbolic moment we have all been waiting for, the amalgamation. Captain Samuel Boyce, Officer Commanding Acting Special Operations Company, will now deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. The Honorable Dale Marshall, QC, MP, Attorney General of Barbados and member of the Defense Board. Chief of Staff, Barbados Defense Force, Commodore Arrington Sherlin. Military Advisor to the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell. Staff Advisor to the Chief of Staff, Commander Mark Peterson. Commanding Officer, Barbados Regiment, Major Pedro Drakes. Commanding Officer Acting, Barbados Coast Guard, Lieutenant Commander Derek Braffitt. Commandant, Barbados Cadet Corps, Major Peter Paulette. Fellow Officers, Force Senior Chaplain, Captain the Reverend Hugh Sanford. Force Sergeant Major 
Master Chief, Petty Officer One, Austin Howell. Other warrant officers, senior non-commissioned officers and enlisted ranks, civilian members of staff, specially invited guests, graduates of the recruiting batch one of 121, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. I am Captain Samuel Boyce, Officer Commanding at 10 Special Operations Company, the home of the Training and Development Institute of the Barbados Defense Force with that responsibility for training the recruits. It's a great pleasure and privilege to stand here this afternoon to deliver this vote of thanks. Firstly, I would like to thank the Almighty God for allowing us all to be here today. And as we depart, Almighty God, give us that wisdom and direction safely to our destinations. I would like to extend sincere thanks to everyone for attending this graduation and sunset ceremony and for making this event significant and memorable by your presence, including those attending virtually. I would like to thank the government of Barbados for allowing the force to progress incrementally and to continue to have confidence in us as one of the critical security forces in Barbados and by extension, the Caribbean. Furthermore, I take this opportunity to thank the President and the Prime Minister of Barbados for the direction they have given this force over the years. Madam President, Prime Minister, I thank you. It is often said that gratitude is the attitude that takes you to your altitude. And so, on behalf of the graduates, I would like to thank the Honorable Minister, Dale Marshall, Attorney General of Barbados, for accepting the invitation to be here with us this afternoon for the conduct of the inspection and delivering of the featured address. Honorable Minister, I am sure that the graduates and all within earshot physically and virtually have garnered your message and have given rise to the seriousness of commitment to the force. Sir, I thank you. I would like to thank the Chief of Staff, Commodore Ermington Sherlin, for his command leadership of the force thus far. It has infused confidence in the force's membership. The command leadership style is about control. In this context, it means delegation of authority that seemingly empowers people. Additionally, commanding leaders also means being forceful, direct, tough, yet flexible where possible. A leader with this commanding style focuses on results. Hence, in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, is testimony of a result, recruit course one of 21, with this being an increase in the human resources of the Barbados Defense Force. Furthermore, the command leadership have also imbued the subordinate leaders to make unpopular decisions and take charge of any situation even those that involve uncertainty, like training recruits during this pandemic. Sir, I thank you. At this time, I would like to thank the military and staff advisors to the Chief of Staff, respectively, Lieutenant Colonel Carlos Lovell and Commander Mark Peterson, for their leadership as it relates to the recruiting portfolio 
from induction to conclusion. Their sentiments within the portfolio was firmness, not harshness, understanding, not weakness, justice, not license, humanness, not intolerance, generosity, not selfishness, pride, not egotism, the kind of thinking needed during this pandemic that assisted the motivation of recruit training. Sirs, I thank you. I would like to thank the commanding officers, Major Pedro Dritz and Lieutenant Commander Derek Braffitt for their leadership in administrative and logistical aspects of the human resources and assets that were made available for this recruit training course. These administrative and logistical characteristics are the instructors, drivers, catering staff, pay and acquisitions, and the medical staff. Notwithstanding, there are many more stakeholders to thank, but they cannot be mentioned during the session due to time constraints. In retrospect, though, the force headquarters and various staff branches needs to be recognized at this time for command and direction, along with the four sergeant major for the entire parade planning for this recruit parcel parade this afternoon. Sirs, I thank you. We also extend our gratitude to those who have supported the recruits in practical ways behind the scenes, from the mentors, lecturing staff, subject matter experts, or ever tireless and worried family who could not visit as they would like to due to COVID-19 internal protocols. Thank you all. As a result, distinguished guests, it has been a mental marathon. But here we are today, standing right on the finish line, even as we brace ourselves for more achievements to come with uncertainty. Recruits, today is a day when we have a sense of fulfillment. Our achievements have been recognized and we continue to celebrate this significant milestone via this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you sincerely. Good evening. The sunset ceremony is historically indicative of the end of the day's fighting during war, but today it is even more symbolic as it ends a grueling induction process. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advance in review order and remain standing for the subsequent sunset ceremony, final salute, and departure of the reviewing officer.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the final salute to the reviewing officer and his departure. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. This brings us to the end of Pass Out Parade for recruit intake one slash to one. On behalf of the Chief of Staff, officers, and enlisted personnel of the Barbados Defense Force, I wish to thank you for joining us both physically and virtually for this evening's proceedings. You can follow the Barbados Defense Force on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and keep posted of our upcoming events. Colors to Church Parade will be celebrated at the Garrison Church, St. Matthias, from 10 hundred hours tomorrow, Sunday, 20th of February. This service will be streamed via our social media platforms. We will again be hosting a virtual walk and run the first stage will be hosted during the period of the 1st of March through the 20th of April via the link https colon forward slash forward slash www.bdfbarbados.com forward slash bdf hyphen walk hyphen run. Persons are invited to participate and sponsorship is also welcome. Finally, stay safe, mask up, Continue to sanitize and enjoy the rest of the weekend. <laughs>